Near the southern tip of Texas, in these Rusacas, remnant wetlands of the Rio Grande, scientists are searching, both for what should be here and what should not. There is growing concern about an alien crustacean in these waters. It's not supposed to be in Texas. One that belongs some 8,000 miles away. It's supposed to be in Australia. Monsters. <laughs> Texas Parks and Wildlife warning about a new invasive species. An invasive crayfish from Australia. Australian red claw crawfish are invading the Lone Star State. It's quite alarming. We do not know how it could affect the native fish and crayfish species. Not a lot of people pay a whole lot of attention to crayfish outside of when they're on their dinner plate. So we didn't trap here yesterday. We're in Brownsville, Texas. One of the many Rosacas here in Let's Brownsville. See. We need luck. Nope. The got skunk bag. this time. Looks like the bait's Thank gone. You. Something got in there and got the bait. Researchers from Texas Parks and Wildlife and the Thank University you know, of Texas at that. Tyler are surveying the ponds around Brownsville to see what lurks in these waters. There's some anecdotal reports that the Australian red claw crayfish has invaded South Texas. We're getting reports from the locals saying, hey, we got this interesting looking critter, what is it? And I'll just like wrap around. Yep. I decided to poke around and find out what is going on with crayfish in Texas. I found that there's very little research done. Okay. Biologists drag nets to see what they can pull up. Bluegill, gambusia. Mostly, they set and check dozens of different traps. This side, we deployed about nine uh, minnow traps. We're looking for Australian red claw crayfish, or if there's any native crayfish. I don't know what we're gonna catch today. Nothing. I'm always alarmed when I hear that there are invasive species anywhere. Mm -mm. Zebra mussels are one of the famous examples of an invasive species that started out as a small population in the Great Lakes and has spread. Another one you see in the news is silver carp. The big rivers, they're jumping out and knocking people out of the boat. You never know when the next zebra mussel or the next kudzu or the next silver carp are gonna come into our environment. The earlier you can catch the spread of invasive species, the earlier you can do some sort of management to mitigate that effect, which is why Texas Parks and Wildlife is funding this research for us to figure these questions out about its distribution, its abundance, how successful it may be as an invader. Does it have the potential to spread? Answering these questions okay. is hands-on work. Nothing. Nothing. It is dirty, mucky work. Fish. Yeah. But surprisingly, I usually have a group of students that, that want to do this work. Well, I like being outside. I think it's interesting to catch all these critters and look at them and how the invasive species are affecting everything. I don't know, I just enjoy it. <laughs> I like all kinds of field work. That's heartening for me as a conservation biologist. We need young people that are interested in getting out and doing this mucky work because it's important. A few hours to the north, another crew is embracing the dirty work in the interest of crayfish science. I'll take this any day over being in the office, just being out here in the field. I got the turtle. Arches has brought in experts from Illinois oh, he's hissing. to study crayfish biodiversity. No crayfish? No crayfish. All right. I'm gonna dig this little burrow out. There's crayfishes that need water almost all the time, and there are those that need it only part of the time. Burrowers. Woohoo! Got it. We're looking at five of Texas' species of greatest conservation need that are crayfish. And there's over 400 species of crayfish in the U.S. Oh, yeah. So incredibly diverse. Two. They've been pretty understudied. We don't know a lot of habitat information, just very basic distributional information. You can't protect biodiversity unless it's been described. Perfect. Check him out, what is that? That looks a little different. The biggest threat that we know of for native crayfish species are invasive crayfish coming into new habitats and actively displacing them. One of the goals of the project is to assess that threat. They're here, so that's good. It's a nice collection for a site this small. You can't overstate how important crayfish are. They are a prey source for fish species, mammal species, birds. 
everything's interconnected and you start to lose some of those middle pieces in a food web, it's going to have an impact somewhere else. Crayfish are a keystone species in our lakes and rivers. See what we got? Back in Brownsville, traps are yielding crayfish. Prochimeris clarki, a red swamp. It suspected that's what we're going to get a lot of here. But instead of Australian ones, most are red swamp crayfish. They've been introduced through farming, but they're pretty much everywhere. They're almost know. naturalized at this point. While these may not be technically native, they do not pose the same threats to ecosystem balance as Australian red claws. And red claw crayfish are here. Oh, there it oh, is. Well, yep, got one. Look at the size of that thing. It's very large, has the potential to outcompete our native species. There he is. So we're trying to see where they are, how many are there. So that's larger than any of our native crayfish. Australian red claw. See if they're successfully reproducing. Now there's now he's blowed them up. Is that a male? Given the size, it's definitely a threat. Yes. It's going to be eating uh, whatever fish it can catch, any crayfish it can uh, get close to. It's a uh, top predator. While its size and presence here are alarming, Apparently they can get up to two pounds in size. 230 millimeters. The numbers caught, at least for now, are encouraging. Two specimens on this trip. From the number of traps that we set out, I was expecting at least 50 to 100. They're not in the, as many rosacas that I was expecting. So I think that's a good sign. We're gonna come back a couple more times this year. We're gonna continue monitoring for this. In the meantime, also got an invasive apple snail. Other exotic species encountered send a message. These are bad too. They carry a, a parasite that can potentially cause meningitis. So these are really nasty. Humans introduce invasive species. We did encounter several Plecostomus. That's an invasive species. How did Plecostomus, apple snails, and Australian crayfish wind up here? A likely source for all three is aquarium dumping. When it grows too big in the aquarium, and instead of just dispatching it, some folks decided to just let it loose. That's well, pretty large. Now it's going to harm the native crayfish species or other fish species. Just how serious a threat Australian red claw crayfish pose remains to be seen. I'm hoping it's just like a small population, then we'll be able to manage and hopefully contain or eradicate. While invasives are being introduced faster than natural systems can keep up, science and education are our best defense. If we hope to save our native ecosystems for the future, paying attention to them now is the first step. It's actually a pretty crayfish. I mean, I remember as a kid going to a stream and picking up my first crayfish and thinking it was the coolest thing I'd ever seen. I want my kids to be able to go out and see the same thing that I've seen.